All right, Blade Smiths, to become a champion in this forge, it's all about taking calculated risks. That being said, go ahead and lift up that cloth on your anvils. There's a calculator on my anvil. I hate math. Bladesmiths on your anvils is a calculator, and you're gonna need that to do a little bit of accounting here in this competition. It's gonna cost you money to use the tools here in the forge. If you look over here, hanging from the rafters is a list of all of our tools and the cost to use those tools in this competition. You wanna use the drill press, it's gonna cost you 200 bucks. And if you wanna use Big Blue, be prepared to throw down 700 bones. Now, where are you gonna get all this money? On this table are six different forging techniques. We've got Jelly Roll Damascus, Cube Canister Damascus, Raindrop Damascus, Sand Mai, Two Ball Bearings, and 5160 Bar Stock. You will be paid the amount of money affiliated with the difficulty of the technique that you choose. In other words, if you choose the Jelly Roll Damascus, we are gonna give you 3,000 Forged and Fire Bucks to spend in this competition. If you choose the 5160 bar stock, we're only gonna give you 500 bucks. Good grief. You know, not having all the tools at your disposal is insanity. You just have to think completely differently. The more money I have, the more tools I'll have. But at the same time, I gotta be able to do that technique. Bladesmiths, pay attention to your money, pay attention to the time. Because when the time runs out in the first round and the judges have evaluated your craftsmanship, one of you will be asked to surrender your blade and whatever's left of your cash and leave the forge. Good luck. Your three hours starts now. I'm very nervous going into the first round, but I'm trying to stay calm and collected. I'm caught kind of between two techniques. I can go with the mono steel. I know I'll be able to knock that out, but I don't get a lot of money for the tools I'm going to need, so I go with Raindrop Damascus. That way, I'll have enough money to buy the tools I need. I've only worked with Damascus a couple times, but I think I'll be able to do it. Now, when we talk about Raindrop Damascus, how is that pattern formed? Raindrop is a layered Damascus pattern where you drill divots into the steel through the layers and then forge them back to the surface, bringing up those circular or raindrop patterns. My first step is I've got to get my steel clean. All right, grinder. Gladen's going to have the use of that grinder for the duration of the competition, so that's a wise purchase. Ah! I choose Cube Damascus. I've done one before, and it turned out really well. And. 11, 12. All right, with the 2,500 forge dollars, I could easily buy whatever tool I need. Historically, the use of the liquid paper in the can is to ease the peeling of the can, but the process 90% of the time gets rushed. Right. I struggled a long time with my anxiety. Oh my God, oh my God. Swinging hammers was like the confidence boost I'd been looking for. You need to find your passion. It's your drive, and sometimes the drive is making blades. Welder! I go with the 5160 because that's what I do. The other stuff is something I've never done. I don't have to forge well, but it comes with a low budget. I can't use all the tools I want to use because I don't have the money, but I can make it happen with what I got. My forge is primitive, old school, so I'm going to do it the way I always do it at home. Jimbo's got that huge chunk of 5160 steel. So we're going to see a lot of elbow grease coming yep. out of the middle two forges because Matt chose the same thing. I decided to go with the 5160 because I use it quite a lot. I know how to heat treat it. With a small budget, I know Big Blue is out, but I don't use a power hammer at home. So doing it by hand, you just heat it and beat it. Is the 5160 block a difficult piece of steel to maneuver? Yeah, that 5160 was literally the trap on the table. It's 3 eighths of an inch thick, and it's 3 inches tall. That's a lot of steel to move. I'm trying to get these lids welded. And these welds are just popping and crackling, and they're not sticking because the metal's not clean. I did not clean the outsides where I was going to be welding. Mother all right. There's white out all over it, so I'm changing methods. I decided I have to scrap it and just go for the raindrop. So by changing gears, I have to start again with a new slate. Belt sander. Colette has decided to start over. Where does that put her? Well, it's not too bad, actually. Raindrop is a little bit easier. 
You're not losing that much cash. I know how to make range off Damascus. I've done it before. It just really sucks that I have $1,000 less than before. Well, there. We're halfway through the competition. I got a big piece of 5160 that don't look like a blade yet. Turn right now. It's like I'm spinning my tires, not getting nowhere. It's just not moving. I'm hammering away until I feel like my arms are going to fall off. They could use the hydraulic press. That will wipe out all their money. What is your time worth? What makes your work go faster? I'm definitely behind. My arms are sore. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish my night. Jimbo and Matt, we're going to give up a dime. They're trying to save money. For what? They're not getting the work done. I feel like I'm just where I started. Huh. <sighs> Clock is ticking. It's really getting down to the wire. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Blake Smith, you have five minutes remaining. And we are in the closing minutes of our first round of this competition. All of these blades still need to be quenched and hardened before the end of the round. Not seeing it. Let's quench some blades. Gladen has quenched his blade. Excellent. Great is going to get. Matt's blade is not getting warm enough. Well, that Something tip's not hot. That's all right, Colette. Do it now. Do it now. Oh, there, there you go. go. Boom. Pull it out. I get a few fireballs. All the files. 30 seconds. Matt, under you your can't. workstation. Woo! Thanks, Will. A Jimbo just quenched his steel. 15 seconds. Matt, you've got to put it in. You don't have a choice. Woo! Vice Smith, shut down your machines. Pull your blade out of the quench. This first round of competition is over. All right, Blade Smiths, in the first round of this pay to play competition, each one of you had to pay for tools to use to forge a signature blade in your signature style. Now it's time to see what you've done with your time and what you've done with your cash. Colette, you're up first. Please present your blade to the judges. Um, basically, kind of got a paddle right now. <laughs> Definitely need to refine the shape a little bit. Other than that, I'd like to see this cleaned up. I'd like to see the pattern. But uh, no, it looks good. Nicely done. Thank you, sir. Matt, please present your blade to the judges. Takes a bit of arm work to move that steel, huh? That's a great buoy shape. There's just so much mass here that needs to be taken away before this is a really a viable knife. Nicely done. Thank you. Gladen, please present your blade to the judges. We got a massive amount of weight here. There's a lot that needs to come off of this. But uh, good shape. I can actually see the rings in here. You did a good job. Thank you. Jimbo, please present your work to the judges. The problem we have here is there's no plunge grind. There's no tang. You've got kind of like a bladeish shape on both ends. I wish you had gotten a grinder or something, cut that steel down, so you would have less mass to work with. I mean, uh, honestly, I mean, this, this is a parameter failure. All right, Jimbo, these are tough challenges. Your blade doesn't make parameters and therefore doesn't make the cut for that reason. I must ask you to please exit the forge. I turned in a piece of steel shaped like a fish instead of a knife, so, you know, I'm not surprised. But hey, I'll give it a good shot. It's honored just to be here among the judges and other smiths. The experience was great.